Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today is Cancel Culture, Canceling Your Ability to Do Your Job. This training is brought to you by Commercial Electronics. If you'd like to learn more about our recording solution, third-party quality assurance services, or live 911, visit comelectronics.com. This webinar is part of our public safety education series, and you can view our upcoming webinars on our training page at comelectronics.com slash training. Now, I want to point out um, a couple of things before we begin. Uh, many of the webinar functions are the same as those that um, you may be used to from other programs, such as um, asking questions, uh, seeing any polls that are launched, uh, and chatting by clicking on the icons on the left of your screen. Um, if there's any handouts associated with the webinar, you'll be able to access those by clicking on the handouts button. Now, you're automatically muted to eliminate background noise. However, if you would like to ask a question, you can click on the microphone um, and um, it'll raise your hand and then you can request to be unmuted. Now, one feature that I want to point out is the notes button. You can take notes during the webinar and those notes will be emailed to you automatically at the conclusion of the session. Um, keep in mind though that you'll be the only one who will be able to see your notes. Uh, you can submit questions at any time by typing your questions into the, the Q&A pane or the chat pane um, in the control panel and I will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. At the end of the session, you'll have an opportunity to rate the session and give any comments. So once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a follow-up email uh, within 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. My name is Beth English, and I'm the QA Program Manager for Commercial Electronics. I started my career in public safety communications 33 years ago at the ripe old age of nine. I've got my master's telecommunicator certification from Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. Um, I'm a TCOL instructor and a past Texas NENA president. Um, on the personal side, my husband and I spend our leisure time RVing with two dogs, four cats, and two hedgehogs, Weezer and Squeak. Now, after today's lesson, you will be able to define cancel culture. Um, you'll be able to list examples of cancel culture from previous centuries because it is not that new. Um, you'll be able to list pros and cons of cancel culture. Um, you'll be able to state how cancel culture can affect your job. Um, and then you'll be able to list ways to keep cancel culture from affecting your job. I would like to issue this disclaimer before we get started. Um, this session will cover issues that have been brought to public attention. The opinions, beliefs, and viewpoints expressed during this session do not necessarily reflect commercial electronics opinions, beliefs, and viewpoints, nor um, they don't necessarily express my opinions um, unless otherwise stated, and, and I will state. Okay, so there are numerous defini def definitions of cancel culture, but the definition according to Merriam-Webster is the practice um, or tendency of engaging in mass canceling as a way of expressing disapproval and exerting social pressure. It's also a total divestment in something. And um, it's also referred to, uh, refers to the people who engage or support this practice. So basically it's a form of public shaming. So when someone's been canceled, um, they, they basically cease to exist to the person or the persons who have canceled them. And it's become so widespread because of the anonymity of the internet and not having to face that person that you're canceling. Now, 
in addition to cancel culture, um, there are also two terms called out and called in. Now being called out is a direct way of saying, you should feel shame about your behavior and I'm not going to tolerate it. Um, being called in is when uh, you explain to a person why their behavior was inappropriate and possibly open a discussion as to how to rectify their behavior in the future. Now, you don't have to do anything other than look at your Facebook or Instagram account to see examples of cancel culture. And it seems that there is a new cancellation each day, in fact, for us to learn about. So let's take these examples, for instance. You know, we all know about Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the national anthem. That actually started a firestorm that is still burning to this day. And although he's made hundreds of millions of dollars in endorsements, um, he's not been signed since cancel culture decided to cancel him. So um, it has not, you know, economically hurt him in the least, but he also has not been able to do what he wants to do, which is play football. Now, for those of you growing up watching Warner Brothers cartoons on Saturday morning, you might miss seeing Pepe Le Pew in any upcoming media. Um, he's been canceled because a New York Times columnist declared that the cartoon character added to rape culture. Um, so Warner Brothers claims that Mr. Le Pew's firing had nothing to do with the columnist article. However, um, Elmer Fudd got canceled for carrying a shotgun and they did this in response to gun violence in the US. So you might draw a different conclusion than what they're actually saying. Now, J.K. Rowling, um, who wrote the Harry Potter series, was canceled for tweeting during Pride Month in 2020 about how sex matters and trans people cannot change. She was called out by Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter, um, as well as her fan base and the LGBTQ community. Um, and as recently as May of this year, um, a Harry Potter themed event that was scheduled in New Zealand was canceled over the comments that she made in March of 2020. So, and Ellen DeGeneres, was canceled after an article in BuzzFeed um, revealed how her employees were treated and how some had walked off the show because of racist comments and microaggressions. Um, and I'll tell y'all, I had to look up microaggressions to see what that was. Um, and that's basically um, the way you treat somebody. Um, and it's not necessarily consciously, but like you may look at somebody um, you may look at somebody of another race, you may look down at them, um, you know, you may skip over somebody um, because maybe they're, um, they're a different gender. Um, and those are, you know, without um, consciously doing it, those are microaggressions. So anyway, she is canceling her show after the 2022 season. And she says that she's been considering it for several years and decided it was time. Um, so you can draw your own conclusion there because this didn't happen until after she got canceled. And then we probably all heard about this, the Goodyear Tires. Um, this photo was tweeted by an employee of Goodyear and it was picked up by a CNN affiliate in Topeka, Kansas. And the photo, shows that wearing certain apparel at work is acceptable and other apparel is not. So um, after this came out, Goodyear issued a statement saying that the slide was not created or distributed by Goodyear Corporate, but 
they did ask that its associates, Goodyear asked that its associates refrain from workplace expressions in support of political campaigning for any candidate or political party, as well as similar forms of advocacy that fall outside the scope of racial justice and equity issues. Um, they did later, um, if you see on the unacceptable Blue Lives Matter, um, they did later say that, um, that they supported the police and they took the Blue Lives Matter off of the unacceptable and said that their, um, their employees could wear Blue Lives Matter apparel. So um, the whole incident with this slide coming out um, hurt the small businesses more than anything that sold Goodyear tires, um, rather than actually hurting Goodyear um, business. And um, many of the small businesses lost customers who, who disagreed with this company's policy. And um, Goodyear um, ended up, you know, like I said, ended up clarifying their policy later, saying that employees could express support for law enforcement. Um, now, many of the small businesses, um, they said that um, they were a small business that sold Goodyear tires, but they were not a Goodyear business. So what they had to do is rely on their reputation that they had built up over the years. And um, several of them said that they had conversations with, you know, a, a customer or two that had decided to leave uh, their business and, um, and they were able to um, convince them to come back because the small business itself was not, you know, um, was not advocating for anything. Um, they just were a small business and they were there to, to provide good service. So um, there were um, also boycotts called for other businesses as well, but, um, but those businesses, rather than losing revenue, they changed their marketing. So like um, a boycott was called for against Coca-Cola after they issued a statement that they didn't agree with the new voter rights legislation in Georgia. So although they were listed as being canceled, it wasn't true nor was the report that Georgia was removing all Coca-Cola products from state-owned buildings. Um, there was also a boycott called for Delta Airlines and someone wanted to, wanted to cancel Delta's tax break in Georgia um, also for agreeing with the new voter law. But the thing about large brands such as, you know, Delta and Coca-Cola is that there um, is a real expectation that these big brands will live up to their customers' values. But you have to wonder, how can they do that with so many different values out there? Because if you're living up to this person's values, you're not living up to this person's values. So this is something that we now have to worry about in jobs in public safety, because agencies can be targeted just like businesses and individuals can. So um, although cancel culture seems to be a relatively new thing, it's been around forever, um, starting in the Bible. Uh, there were many who were um, cast away from society because they had upset the mob, um, as it was called back then. Um, and um, and the, uh, the mob, which was primarily comprised of publicans and religious leaders who thought they were the righteous ones. Um, sound familiar? And then in medieval Europe, through colonial America, uh, Puritans used stocks or public restraints to punish criminals. I'm sure you've probably seen them in some movie or something where their um, wrists and their, head, their necks are locked into these stocks. Um, tarring and feathering was also a form of uh, public corporal punishment. And during World War II, French women who were thought to be traitors had their heads shaved. Um, today, that wouldn't bother us because, you know, half of us have our heads shaved. 
I don't, but a lot of us do. Um, and then what about in your childhood? Um, did you ever, oh goodness, my picture's crossed. Um, did you ever cancel anyone or participate in cancellation um, on the playground because someone dressed funny or they talked funny um, or they wore glasses or they just weren't considered part of the cool kids? Um, and, and as adults, have you ever canceled a coworker because they were, in your opinion, too young, too old, too fat, not right for the job, or they just plain got on your nerves. Um, we've all either done it or seen it done at one time or another. Yep. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of cancel culture. Now, you may agree with pros, you may agree with cons. Um, but, um, so many have said that cancel culture is a good practice. I, my opinion personally is I don't see how anyone could think that. Um, and you may wonder to yourself, how can anyone think that? This is their thought process. Okay. Um, expressing oneself by taking others to task is part of the democratic process and free speech. And I disagree with that because um, there is no free speech anymore. You, you can be taken to task for anything that you say. Um, canceling others is a manifestation of holding others accountable for their bad behaviors. And calling out is one way to challenge those who deliberately hurt others or powerful people beyond our reach. Um, that one I can agree with, um, calling out people who deliberately hurt others. Um, I don't think that cancel culture personally um, does anything to powerful people beyond our reach. If it did, you know, there would be, there would be some people that were not around anymore. Okay. Others will argue against cancel culture um, because canceling someone is an attempt to stifle their free speech rights. And that I agree with. Um, tweeting against others in anger begets more anger and can, can lead to um, more serious practices such as bullying. And then canceling raises the question of whether we should cancel everyone with whom we disagree. I mean, where should the line be drawn or is it even possible to do so? Um, in a Psychology Today article, uh, it was called Five Reasons Why People Love Cancel Culture. Um, the the um, author of this um, alluded to cancel culture as being narcissism at its finest. And a couple of points that he made um, is that cancel culture increases social status. So research reveals that sociometric status, that's respect and admiration from our peers, is more important to our sense of well being than socioeconomic status. Um, and I can, I can agree that respect and admiration from our peers would be more important than the money, but I don't think that cancel culture is the way to go about it. Um, he also wrote, cancel, cancel culture reduces the social status of enemies. Um, the relative difficulty of doing something good and the prolonged waiting period to receive credit for it is why cancel culture um, has flourished. It offers quicker social rewards. So those are the two points that he made about cancel culture. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's talk about cancel culture and the job. Now, many moons ago, an employee could express their opinion outside of work 
to friends, family, or even other coworkers, and that would be it. It was just a conversation and no one knew any different. But with social media now, no one can express an opinion on anything without it going viral. If the opinion is contrary to what your agency's policy is, you can find yourself in hot water. So what happens then is the agency has to determine if they should be concerned with only the city or county management, or should they be concerned with employees and customers and community members. Since the role of employers has expanded and is more long-term focused, directors and managers now have to be more sensitive to the cancel culture. And this is what frustrates many who work in these agencies. Um, you know, we've all heard stories of employees being fired for posting their opinions to social media. I mean, all you have to do is Google dispatcher rants and you'll get hundreds of articles on dispatchers being fired for posting what they feel on their social media pages. And those opinions don't necessarily have to pertain to the workplace. They could be giving their opinion on the economy, on COVID, um, or the elections or anything else. But if one person is offended, that post could go viral, eventually ending up on the chief's desk. So um, most of us know how much trouble we will find ourselves in if we post our opinions and those opinions don't line up with the current group think. Now, with numerous issues being canceled these days, um, it seems that nothing is acceptable and free speech is non-existent. Many things that are being said by the cancel groups are true, but many things are not. Um, regardless, some of the groups that are calling for cancellation of certain things can trigger various reactions in each of us. And those reactions can manifest themselves on the job. Um, for instance, it seems that almost daily, we hear of another quote unquote protest in which businesses are burned and looted, people are shot, and the mob moves on down the street destroying more of the city. Some publications will report that these are BLM activists participating in a peaceful protest, while other publications report them as mobs of thugs intent on destroying their own cities. Okay, sorry, I had to cough again. Um, okay, so depending on which publications you read, you develop an opinion um, about the group or the groups. And it may even make you angry when you read about what's happening. So when you get a call from what you perceive to be a member of one of these groups, you may handle the call completely differently than you would a call from someone else. Now, I do wanna take a poll real quick. Okay, if a caller belonged to a group that represents something you're total, uh, you are totally against, would that influence you when taking a call or dispatching responders? Okay, so this is definitely a no, which is good to hear. Um, although um, we have heard stories about, um, about some who have let it influence the way they handled a call. Um, and so, um, these issues that are coming up can influence, if you let it, it can influence the way you handle calls. 
Now, another area many of us may have found ourselves in is the overreactive zone of communication. Okay, so let's say that you make a complaint to management about something that you feel is wrong, but nothing happens. And I know a bunch of you right now are saying, yep, that happened, I did that. Um, so you make another complaint and another. And eventually you start to feel that you're not being heard or you're being ignored. So eventually you will reach the overreactive zone of communication. This is where you will find yourself when you're frustrated and you can't believe your situation is turning out this way. So you become more aggressive. You're more argumentative and more disruptive in your behavior. Now, once you've reached this point, it's difficult to have a calm and rational conversation with you because you are enraged by now. So at this point, you feel the only way to resolve your complaint is to take it to the internet and social media. And this is the behavior that hurts both you and the employer. Now, <clears throat> one movement that's been started by the cancel culture is the defund the police movement. Now, many of us work for agencies that handle law enforcement calls, so this one becomes personal, okay? We all know that there are bad cops, just as there are bad dispatchers, doctors, community leaders, and congressmen and senators. But law enforcement has been singled out as needing to be defunded, regardless of any evidence to the contrary. Okay, now, because this issue is personal to us, it's hard for us to handle calls from citizens who are complaining about police, their response times, their attitudes, and how they handle the calls, all while telling us, uh, you know, we definitely need to be defunded. And yet, as you can see in the areas where police have been defunded, the crime rate has gone up drastically and um, keeping this from affecting your job is hard and it gets harder by the day. So with all of this going on, how can you not be affected by cancel culture? The more issues and people get canceled, the harder it's going to be to not be affected. Now, um, as employees, we've been reprimanded and some have been fired for actions outside the workplace that are considered out of line with you know, agency, city or county standards. And this has all happened as the lines between employees' private and work lives have become blurred. So um, although this wasn't caused by cancel culture, but I was reprimanded once by my boss for a Facebook post that I did. Um, I called our weekly command staff meetings, the weekly beating. And, and I posted it pretty much, it was every Tuesday, one o'clock. And, um, and I would post it on, you know, Facebook in the weekly beating or, you know, at the weekly meeting, somebody shoot me now, but whatever. Because it was a meeting that could have been handled by email that took two and a half hours. So one week while the chief was on, on vacation, I posted that we had an actual command, command staff meeting since he was on vacation. And when he saw that, he was livid because the city council and the city manager would be reading that, which was not true. I wasn't friends with any of those people, and so they would not be seeing it. Um, unfortunately, my boss decided to correct me in front of the whole command staff in an email. So needless to say, things went downhill after that. But, you know, agencies can now monitor what their employees are saying and doing off duty. And many feel that this um, monitoring has gone too far. But right now, citizens are the ones putting the pressure on employers to monitor 
and sanction their employee speech. Now, the truth is, employers would much rather not have to take responsibility Okay. So anyway, as I was saying, the truth is that employers would much rather not have to take responsibility for every obnoxious thing that their employees say, but can cancel culture demands it. And that affects what you do and decisions that you make. Um, you know, I posted an opinion once on someone else's post that was apparently, uh, contrary to what another poster believed. So someone I didn't know in a state I'd never been to decided to school me on the issue, which I didn't need. I was expressing an opinion, not a fact. Um, so since then I've had to check myself be before posting another opinion. Um, I, you know, basically I just decided it's not worth it um, to be called out by people I don't know in places I've never been. Okay. So one of the worst parts of cancel culture is that you get so frustrated and angry and then the hate starts to settle in. You see opinions posted by a person or a group and it makes you just want to rip into them. You wonder how any intelligent being can believe the stuff being spewed by them. So one thing um, you can do to combat this is to use substitution for the person posting. Put someone you love in that person's position and see if you would want your loved one to be treated the way that person had been treated. Um, also, investigate what you read. Don't just take it for gospel. Um, I mentioned earlier about Coca-Cola being canceled in Georgia and being removed from any state-owned building. The truth was that one person asked for it to be taken out of his office, but Coca-Cola has provided for free their drinks to all the state congressional offices, and they continue to do so. So technically, they didn't get canceled. It was a sensationalized news report by the media proving that you have to do your due diligence before taking anything as gospel um, or jumping on a bandwagon. Okay. How to handle the cancel culture. Um, supervisors and managers are going to have to work closely with HR to handle the risks associated with employees and cancel culture. Um, you know, at risk of handling things wrong um, are the reputation of the agency um, and groups who can mount negative publicity campaigns when they think the agency hasn't responded correctly. And you can look, um, you can look at any uh, post on, uh, or look at any news story. Um, of course, you have to take those with a grain of salt um, about, you know, somebody, um, an agency having a, a negative publicity campaign launched against them from a citizen who didn't like the way a call was handled. Um, they didn't like the outcome of the call. You know, maybe they got arrested. Um, they were the caller and they got arrested because they had warrants when we got there. So they got arrested and the other person didn't. So now all they have to do is get on social media and rake the um, agency over the coals because, you know, I called and they came out and they arrested me. Um, you know, they can uh, make up their version of the incident, whatever happened, and, and then <clears throat> you're automatically going to get citizens jumping on top of that bandwagon, you know, saying, oh, yeah, I got stopped and the guy was totally rude or 
um, you know, they came to my house and they didn't do anything there either. And, you know, I mean, we've heard it all before. So, um, you know, so you have to worry about those negative publicity campaigns. Um, you also have to examine if employees are being targeted or canceled because their views are different. Um, and then if you have a complaint, you also need to make sure that um, you're investigating it through compliance, legal, and HR, since canceling is a form of retaliation. Um, and that can raise those legal issues that you have to worry about, okay? So now with the issue of employees resorting to social media because they feel they aren't being heard, employers need to do several things to, present, to prevent that. Um, you need to acknowledge an employee's complaint right away. Thank them for coming to you to show that you have acknowledged them. Don't voice your perspective of the complaint. Instead, ask open-ended questions and, and keep those questions neutral. Um, you know, rather than, um, so tell me what you consider um, this idiot to have done to you. Um, you might wanna, you know, tone it back a little bit and say, so tell me what you consider to have um, happened in this situation. Um, and I know that, you know, I, a lot of us tend to um, go the direct route. Um, you know, even, even in our personal lives, we go the direct route because that's what we do constantly. We've got to get directly to the issue. So, um, and you may be um, called out for that um, by a citizen. Okay, you also want to repeat back to them what you are hearing. And you want to use phrases like, I'm hearing that you're concerned with this situation and you're worried that something might happen. Is this correct? And then you want to keep asking questions, even if you don't necessarily need the information. Um, but asking the questions keeps the employee engaged and it will also show them that you're interested in their effort to speak up. So if you have um, a cancellation incident, so let's say that one employee um, cancels another employee because of an issue, then you're going to have to investigate that as a uh, supervisor or a manager. You're going to have to investigate that and you have to keep um, the HR laws, you have to keep um, state laws, and um, all of those in perspective when you're doing this, because otherwise, like I said, it could be considered retaliation instead of handling a complaint. Now, <clears throat> you're going to get frustrated with cancel culture and it's going to affect your job if you don't keep it in check. The hardest part is going to be helping citizens who are at the same time spewing hatred um, and or misinformation about issues that are important to you. You have to remember that everyone has had different experiences in all kinds of situations and may have opinions contrary to yours. Um, personally, I got taken to the cleaners by a lawyer that I hired so to this day, I can't stand lawyers. Um, now I understand that not every lawyer is crooked like mine was. So, you know, I'm actually able to have a couple of friends who are lawyers. And you also want to remember that substituting someone you love as a person in the marginalized group and deciding if you would want that person treated the same way can give you a completely different perspective on what cancel culture is advocating for. Okay, um, so this was a short session. Um, do we have any questions?
um, that you want answered. And while I'm waiting for you to put in any questions you want answered, um, remember if you need a certificate for today's lesson uh, for CEUs, send an email to training at comelectronics.com. And I want to thank you for joining us. This presentation has been made possible by Commercial Electronics, provider of public safety solutions, including higher ground, NG911 recording, CQIP third-party quality assurance program, and our newest product, Live 911, which allows for one-way streaming of the Live 911 call to the officer's computers in their units. So if you want to know more about Live 911 or any of our other products, reach out to us at training at comelectronics.com or directly to me, Beth, at comelectronics.com. So um, I hope you have a great day and I will leave this up for a few minutes so that um, if you have any questions about anything, you can uh, type it in. And on the um, video, we will include the link to that video um, in the email when we send it out to you. So thank y'all and have a great day.